All right, everybody. It is Monkey Puzzle, and it's time for episode number nine, playing Primitive Plus here on the center. So here we are back at Puzzle Crypt Village, right in the middle of the map. This is our location. Well, those pins are never really quite accurate, but uh, see right to the left of the M there on the me, that little thing that looks like a like a little, uh, what do you call it, that thing in the back of your throat, the uvula hanging down. That's where we are, right there. That thing is that ruin sticking out over there. So if you joined me for the last episode, you saw me and Jim Bob, Jim Bob and I, start this village. And then in the meantime, Arali has started a blacksmith over there, a smithy. Um, so let's take a little tour of what's been done. So I did this little greenhouse juicery thing, and today our main order of events is we're going to make some juice. We're going to make all the new drinks, I think, that you can in Primitive Plus. I'm going to try, but we'll see. Um, but before we get into that, let's just take a little tour of what has been done. So here is Jim Bob's Tavern here. So the new brick parts in Primitive Plus actually come out kind of gray. So, which is a little disappointing. Uh, the texture is nice, but the color isn't. So he tried dyeing them red, and he wasn't particularly happy with it. But that's what he did. So there it is. And there was also some randomness about whether he was able to dye other parts or not. So uh, Primitive Plus parts are not quite up to speed with that. But you can see in here, he has done a great job decorating this place as a tavern. So... Check it out. Look at these bars, man. These come with Primitive Plus, and these are so nicely textured and very cool. So you get this big, tall, straight one, and then this L one you can hide behind and put your little coin purses down here and stuff like that. <laughs> I actually don't know if you can put anything on them. I doubt it. And then Jim Bob made these candles that you can light. I think you got to access their inventory, and candles actually still need another fuel in them but uh so be it and he's got these nice fermenting barrels up there i don't think he's put much in them yet but we're gonna help him start that today whether he likes it or not he's got this nice trophy up here and then all these tables and chairs and such that uh make it look like yeah you could uh actually hang out here and have a little food and drink and Check out the map of the center, and I guess we got some games over here. Shoot the dummy and weapon racks to check your weapons at the door. And there's another one over here for that and here. So yeah, every door you can check your weapons. And then upstairs, I think we saw this last time, but these are the rooms for hobbits that you can duck in. And there's a little bed and a nightstand for each. So, pretty cool. Weary travelers can stay there, or you could just use it to, like, uh, stash your stuff in the cupboard and fast travel somewhere else. So, we got this nice tavern going on. Oh, and check it out. We got the dino head up there, the T-Rex. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Oh, and this, I have to make some of myself. This is the modern storage shed. Very modern. <laughs> and it's got a hundred slots. Fancy that. That's pretty cool. So that's a lot of slots. Um, so we'll have to make use of that. And he's got these very impressionist paintings of uh, snow bears or polar bears and snowstorms. <laughs> and then let's go check out Arali, what he did. He put this together in a night over here. So yeah, this is the blacksmith shop and forge. So he's got a bunch of cool stuff going on. Oh, he's actually changed it since I've been here last. He had a bunch of forges and stuff down here. The problem with them, though, is I guess because this is set low to the water, he couldn't light anything here. So I guess he's rearranged. That's pretty cool. He's got another one of those bars here. And, ooh, oh, look at this. This has, like, a little grate in it to uh, for drainage, I guess, for your drinks or whatever. And they got the lamps that come with Primitive Plus and a bunch of other random stuff here these are the market stalls that come with primitive plus and you can put these little trading crates down in them and 
I don't know how this works. I can't seem to access it. Unlock, demolish, pick up, rename. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll figure that out as we go. Let's check out inside what's going on in here. Oh, he has totally changed stuff around. Yeah, he used to have his counter in here, but now this has become the forge and stuff with his wood storage shed uh, with wood. <laughs> Fancy that. Uh, firewood holder doesn't have that much firewood. He just rearranged stuff, so don't know if he's actually had the chance to use it. But now he can light his forges. That's a good thing in the forge. And this over here, this is the grindstone, which is used for making some of the fancier weapons in Primitive Plus, like the battle axe. And what's this? This is the Viking axe. I've learned the engrams for those already. So when it comes time to make those, we can either come and barter with the Raleigh here for his finely made weapons, or we'll just kind of come and use his tools without telling him <laughs> one or the other. So there we go. The town is growing. And he went ahead, put some of the docks around it and stuff. He knew I was going to make a bakery next. That's my next goal there. So he skipped the space and then didn't want to build right on the, the creek here. So went over there. So I'll put the bakery in here and then we'll kind of figure out how to hook the rest of the stuff in together. Maybe have a little bridge going over this little creek here, wherever that goes. Yeah, so the bakery comes next. I'm not going to try to build that this episode, but I did start last time you saw with uh, this wheat field, <laughs> quote unquote. You know, it's just a bunch of crop plots, but have been growing the wheat here. Still did not hook up irrigation to it, and it's been doing just fine. You can see that the water is 583 out of 600, and that's just from the rain here on the center. And anyone who's played the center knows it rains all the time. So we use the large plots, crop plots, because they hold more water. But I think the mediums would have done just as well. So yeah, we've been growing wheat in these. And got it stocked up with the bone meal fertilizer. Did a little grinding on that. And then in here, I've got barley. And we're going to actually put that to use in a minute, too. So I just started that last night. It was all wheat before, but we're going to need barley when we get to brewing some beer. Let's go ahead and grab all that barley. Oh, and it comes out as fresh barley, which... It must be the same as the wheat. You have to dry it. Um, so I'll show you that. So let's just grab all this barley. Not sure how much we're going to need. I probably should have started some drying already. And then uh, I'll just grab some wheat here for the demo as well. So when we come over to our greenhouse, I put a, um, what should we call this thing? The smokehouse in the side here just to keep our berries and drinks and stuff fresher longer but also you can throw wheat in here as fresh wheat and then over time it turns into this dry wheat there's some fresh wheat there and then it's going to be the same with the barley i assume unless oh is this full yeah this is full so let's uh let's take uh, some of these out and we can probably condense them and throw the barley in and that should start to smoke and turn into dried barley hopefully by the time i get to that <laughs> it might be a delay because of that let's just throw ahead go ahead and throw these into stacks Alrighty, so we're going to make good use of some of those berries in a second let's just check on our crops here how they're doing so Tomatoes have been making tomatoes, and the grapes have been making grapes, and we got more tomatoes over here. Lots of tomatoes. Looks like we get almost 150, and same with the grapes, and then all the other stuff too. We got. Let's just do a whole harvest here, if I can get in there. We got 148 sugar cane. And it's probably going to be about the same over here. And then in these plots, this is coffee. Look at that. I guess 148 is the magic number for things here. 
and there's some fresh tea leaves and then let's grab the rest of the sugar cane and we're gonna get to making some refreshing beverages <laughs> all right so the tea is like the wheat and the barley and stuff you got to throw the fresh tea leaves into the smokehouse and they turn into dried tea bags it still has the same a little picture it's not a picture of a tea bag but i'll accept that that's a dry tea bag coffee you don't have to do anything to but we'll get to coffee and tea in a second because there's something we need to make for that but first in these fruit presses here, you can see I got two of them, that one and that one. I've already started making some fresh sugar juice. Um, so we just, for that, we just throw all our sugar cane in there and then go ahead and make that. And that's going to make 29 buckets of fresh sugar juice. Now we're going to need to turn that into sugar in order to uh, use it. But for that, we're going to need the cauldron. So we'll make the cauldron in just a second. We're going to need that for the coffee and tea as well. But the one thing we can make right away, if we throw our tomatoes in there, we can go ahead in our consumables and the things I've learned, we can make tomato juice. So it takes the tomatoes and some salt. So this salt is just made by putting, putting crystal in the hand mill here. You can see there's a little egg room for that. So grind up your crystals. You assume they're salt crystals at the time, I guess, when you do that. And yeah, we can go ahead and I should have just started it when I was in here. We can make four tomato juice. So I believe it uses six, 60 tomatoes and one salt to make one tomato juice. So it actually takes quite a few and that's not going to make until we are done making the sugar here let's just clear that cue and go ahead and get those going first and you can see it says great for restoring your vitality so to me that makes me think that this is going to be good for your health we'll find out you can see that the press works pretty slowly let's get back up out of there and Go ahead and get those sugar buckets back in the queue. Um, but we're about to get our first thing of tomato juice. So let's check that out. Now, I'm at full health right now. So, oopsie, hello. I'm at full health right now. So let's uh, take a little, take a few points off our health and see how good this tomato juice is and see if it does in fact restore health so i'm just coming up here because it can take a little leap off <laughs> and go hurrah ow okay so i can't do that a second time you can see it took me lower than half health let's see what i'm at for health so right now i'm at about 80 so if i drink the juice i consumed it and defecated and it took me up to about 107. So I assume that uh, I probably got about 25 points of health with that. That's, I didn't see exactly. But I guess it would take four of those to restore you to full health. But one juice for a quarter of your health, that's not too bad. So I guess it looks like one harvest of my tomatoes is enough to restore me one time. And I actually didn't look what the spoil time was on this looks like in here it's about we got about 12 hours on it so that's not bad so you can keep a stack of those going all the time i'm not sure what they stack up to because i can't make enough i think in my notes i say they stack to 10 so you can carry 10 of those with you and you get 12 hours each on them let's see if it's the same in my inventory it is so that's not too bad at all. They don't weigh much, so that's cool. Oh, and we've got these grape juice too. We can go ahead and make grape juice as well. We'll get that on the stack and you can make seven of them. You can see you get this little free barrel with it. Same like you do with the uh, fresh sugar juice bucket. So, and the grape juice, yeah, like it looks like that. So there we go. I don't know actually 
if you can drink the grape juice directly. It won't let you put it in there. It does let me use the item. And I'm not sure what we'll get from it, if anything. So, I don't know. Let's go ahead and use one. Nope, I can't use it that way. I think it's only good for making into wine. I can't put it back in there, so I'll just hold on to that. So to move along with the rest of the things here, we're going to have to go ahead and make a cauldron. And I assume that's going to be here in the construction table. So I don't think I've learned the engram for it yet. Nope, there it is. So the cauldron is like the cooking pot, um, but I'm not sure how it's better than the cooking pot. It's probably more, uh, has more slots. But you can also make some of this stuff, this primitive plus stuff, that I don't think you can make in the non-cauldron. Be under heating. Nope, that's a lantern. How about cooking? There we go. There is the cauldron. So I need some iron ingots, some flint, and some stone. Let me get that together pretty quick. Okay, I think I got it all together. I already threw some metal in there. This goes ahead and see we can make the cauldron so there again is all the stuff we need not too expensive i could make four of them <laughs> so i threw 100 ingots in there but one will do it for now and i assume that we're going to need a fuel source for this too must contain basic fuel so let's see if we've got some where we've got some firewood kicking around plenty of firewood so we'll see if that works and oh we might not want that though because of the charcoal charcoal issue might uh create dyes so let's bring some thatch as well okay now let's find a place to put this it's getting pretty cramped in here behind the counter I could possibly sacrifice one of the fruit presses, but, you know, the fruit press is pretty slow, so it might be handy when we've got a bunch of customers and stuff to be able to make lots of jute. Now, this is going to be picky about where it wants to go. It wants a certain amount of distance from everybody, which is kind of annoying. Let's see. Well... Why don't we just put it right in front of the coffee and tea? Because that's a lot of what's going to go into it. Oh, and we're probably going to need... We, I've got two water skins here. Let's see if I've got some hide. We're probably going to need a bunch of water skins, too, for this kind of thing. So let me go ahead and make some of those up. Oh, I don't know if I need 23. <laughs> There, we'll get a half a dozen of those crafting. And then uh, let's get some water. Okay, all tanked up on water. So let's go ahead and grab some of these sugar buckets to start with. Probably don't really want to throw all those in there, but looks like I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't know how fast this thing is. So let's throw those and those in there and then that and we can light the fire. And then that should be making just straight sugar. I'm not sure why you would need to add more water because you're really trying to just boil it down, evaporate the water off of it. And there is no indicator here of how long this is going to take. Aha, there it is. Oh, and we got 20 cane sugar out of that. So that's fantastic. And that's just from one bucket. So that's going to be a lot of sugar. So now we can, whoop, we can put the sugar back in here. And we can make a lot of stuff now. So let's get some of these things. And get some mayo berries and some azul berries and some tinto berries and some amar berries and some narco berries and some stem berries and let's get some backup of all those things and we're going to be able to make a bunch of stuff can i move 
<laughs> and let's throw all those in here. So there's five different things we can make from all these now. And I think they all pretty much do the same thing, but I'm not sure. Oh, and I'm hungry too. That's actually good. Let me just eat one thing so I don't die. Because a lot of these things will give you some food value. So let me see. In here, yeah, we can make all these things now. We can make tinto berry juice and stem bowl juice. Now, this is made from narco berries and stem berries. So it uses 10 more berries, basically, than everything else. All the rest of these just use six of the colored berries. But I think they all do the same thing. These are supposed to um, basically restore your... Um, your stamina and you get no stamina cost while running see that says great for restoring your energy reserves and so for that that one says the best for that we'll see if that actually has an advantage so let's go ahead and make some of these let's make some stimble we could make that and i guess we only had enough in there for one. Oh yeah we didn't have that many stim berries but we could make one of them and uh let's yeah let's make all these we can make some Tinto berry, and we can make the, uh, which one was this? This is the Azul berry, and the Mayo berry, and the Amar berry. <laughs> and then I'll make the rest of it up after this, and we'll fill our little smokehouse refrigerator full of juices pre-crafted for our customers. And so, yeah, we got another 12-hour timer on this one, which is not bad at all. So, let me see. Let's use up some of our stamina and see how much you restore. So, I heard these things like restore your stamina, but if your stamina tops up, that effect will then go away. Hold on a second. Let me pull my notes up again. Yeah, it says all these last for 30 seconds. So, there's the stamina regen for 30 seconds and the no cost to sprinting i've got really high stamina so <laughs> this takes a lot for me to run out of stamina it's one of the things i like to pump a lot now my question is if our if our um, stamina tops off will we still keep getting the no stamina cost for running okay so that's down pretty low Let's see where our stamina is at. We're at, like, it's coming back pretty quick. But, oh, I got to put this down here to be able to do that. Um, oh, man. <laughs> it's already back up again. I'm too slow. And uh, let's just eat a little bit. But I'm supposed to get 15 food value for this as well. So I'm assuming that's out of 100. All right. We're not going to really have time to look in my inventory. We'll just look at how much of the little lightning bolt this restores when I drink it. All right, and look at, let's look at the food too. So, okay, we're down a little bit more than half. Go ahead and drink our stim bowl. And, oh, it's going up really fast. And now we're supposed to get no cost for running. So, that looks right. may or may not have been 30 seconds um but yeah it gives you some stamina and you can run farther so i guess if you have a stack of those and again oops, they stack up to 10 you're going to go on a long run across the island or whatever it would be good for that so look at all these woohoo yeah and let's just go on a little jog <laughs> here let's set those up down here they're very good looking Nice and brightly artificially colored. I guess they're all natural. All natural and organic. All right. So let's take a little run here. And make sure there's nothing that's going to eat us. So let's drink the Azul one first. And we should just be able to like run, run, run as much as we want. And stamina is still going up. So that's not bad. I guess it'll start flashing once we start using it again. 
But, uh, yeah, it's not going down at all. That's pretty useful. I can't really quantify if this thimble is better or not. Oop, I'm dehydrated, so they don't give you water. That's too bad. But yeah, I can drink that and keep going. So you guys get the point. And it's actually taking my hunger up oh, pretty well. Let's just drink these two. Yeah. Getting my little drumstick back up. Uh, lickety split. Not too bad. So that's what all those do. That's pretty cool. So let's go ahead now. Let me see in here. And let's throw in our coffee. And let's just take all this out for the moment so it doesn't compete. And then let me... Oops, those are the ones I wanted to leave in. I want to take those out. Throw those in. And we're going to make some coffee. I don't think you need sugar for the coffee. In fact, just for testing. Let's take that out. Put the sugar in there. And then let me go ahead and fill these skins up. And we'll come back and see if we've got coffee. Okay, I'm going to throw a bunch in there. And then I guess these all take a minute. And then once we have coffee... Let's see if we can make some tea Do with our dry tea bags. Oh, there it is. And we get a free cup. <laughs> so let's grab that, put that down there. Let's throw that in there. Take those out. And then maybe I'll put that second. And we'll make some coffee and tea. So we don't need these anymore. Let's see what we, it says here. So, consume it to gain increased hyperthermic insulation and slow your rate of food consumption. Effects last 15 minutes. So, hyperthermic insulation, if I'm correct, um, I think means that uh, you can withstand heat better. Um, I'm pretty sure that's right. If I got it opposite, tell me. I get confused sometimes between hypo and hyperthermal. Um, but you would think coffee would help you withstand um, cold better. So I might have that backwards. <laughs> uh, that's so dumb. Sorry about that. But uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and drink it. Ooh. Okay. And so, yeah, hyperthermal went up quite a bit. And we got some tea here. That's looking very nice. Let's see if the effect stacks it all. 338.78. Okay, the hyperthermia went up to 134. So that did stack. And then what if we drink this? Oh, look, we can't drink the coffee now because we got the effects. Oh, look at that. We have a little countdown, a little coffee and tea. So we've increased our hyperthermal greatly. And the tea, if I didn't say it... Um, it reduces your need to uh, drink water. So now we'll, for 15 minutes, we're gonna need less food and less water. See, there it is. Uh, slow your rate of water consumption. So there we go. We got coffee and tea, and I'm gonna be a lot less hungry and a lot less thirsty for a while. All right, I looked it up and I got it right. Hypothermal insulation helps you with cold and hyper helps you with heat. So both of these help you withstand heat better the, by raising your hyperthermal insulation, which is a little funny. I can kind of see that with tea, but coffee, I think coffee should have done the opposite. But anyway, yeah, so being cold helps makes you get hungrier faster and getting hot makes you thirstier faster. And this will help you with both of those. So that's pretty cool. So we got that. We got the health. We got the stamina from the juices. So a lot of good effects from these things. And I've got more of them here. I got nice little stacks of them <laughs> coming up. So we'll stop that for now. And uh, I'm going to fill these up. And we're going to work on the next thing those are all the uh, fresh drinks I think you can do in primitive plus um, plus you can do some fermented beverages which I'm not sure if we can do all of yet no 
to make beer, I need to make malt. And to make malt, I need 25 dried barley. So I won't be able to do that yet, but I think I can make, can I make wine? Wine needs, I think, needs grape juice. And you gotta have 35 grape juice, I think, to make wine. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't quite make wine yet either, but I'm gonna get that set up and we'll have that for next episode, I guess. But both of these, beer and wine, will increase your melee and your stamina for 15 minutes. Wow, that's a long time, 15 minutes. So if you're gonna do some fighting or whatever, those would be a good thing to have. So I'm gonna build up with my grape harvest until I have 35. I'm pretty sure that it's the grape juice and not the straight grapes that we need. And then you combine that with sugar, 35 grape and one sugar. So let's take some sugar there. And then the beer uses 35 wheat and 10 malt. And again, the malt is made from 25 dried barley um, with water in the cauldron. And those all happen over here in these fermenting barrels. So I think you can make mead as well, because, yeah, oh, he's, he's doing it here. He's got water jars and honey, but the water jars are empty. So hasn't done that yet. And then in here, what's he doing? He's got, he's just got sugar. Okay. Oh, and look, he's trying to do it. He's got wheat and the water jars but he doesn't have the malt in here. Okay, and yeah, he hasn't done the grapes yet either. So let's see if regular grapes go in. No, they don't. So that answers the question. It's gotta be the grape juice with the sugar. So it's gonna take quite a bit to get up there. So it doesn't seem I can quite pull that off this episode. Uh, without waiting for a few hours, but I want to get this episode out so you guys have something for tomorrow, Sunday. But Monday is my day off. I haven't had a day off in two weeks, so I'm finally going to get a day off again, and I should be able to pump some episodes out with that. But I want to get one more thing crafting here before we're done. We've touched on all the drinks. We didn't make two of them yet, but we'll have those for next episode. But we can also make some jam, I believe, in the cauldron. And it looks like actually what I have the most of right now. We could do azelberry. Yeah, let's do azelberry jam. And jam takes some amount of berries. I saw conflicting amounts and some sugar. I think it takes 50 berries and five sugar, but I'm not completely sure. And I don't know if it takes water or not, but apparently you can make jam of all the kinds of berries, at least the four colored ones, not the narco and the stem berry jam. That'd be funny to have narco berry jam. So that's cooking. And uh, let me throw some water in there and see what that does. Up. Oh. There it is. We've got our first jar of jam of azelberry. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what that does. It's nice and blue. <laughs> it's got the little wrapper on the top and it did use a water. So, and I actually will need to look back at the footage to see exactly what it used up. Uh, we'll see. And then I don't, have a lot of hunger or I'm not missing a lot of hunger right now. Oh, because <laughs> I've got my coffee and tea, but I want to make sure I know what this jam does. So I'm going to let these effects run out and let some of my hunger drain and I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> he was just wandering around. Um, but these guys are good to have just wandering around because apparently they pick up seeds when they do it. So let's get him back over here. 
And that seeds here are very good for getting organic oil, which you can power torches with, or you can uh, use for making your jerky and stuff like that. So anyway, we'll say you stop following me and oh, wrong keys. And we're gonna enable wandering. All right, you just wander around and uh, pick up seeds. <laughs> and was it on passive? Why are you on passive? Yeah, on neutral. Okay. So I've got my hunger down pretty far. And I looked at this and when I first made it, I had seven days on it. So this lasts a week real time. So it's a good way to preserve your food. And then let's see, let's put this down here where I can just key it like that. And we've got 24 and a half. And it's going up. Let's see how far it goes up. Quite a bit. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, so that gave us 60 food. So two of these, two jams would be more than enough to top you up if you were totally empty. So that's great. So that's a really efficient source of food from berries because, you know, as far as it preserving and stuff and being easy to eat and one thing. So that's a little bit of stuff today from Primitive Plus. Hope you all enjoyed that, uh, experimenting with me with the different kind of beverages and stuff. So we're learning more about Primitive Plus, moving along here with the village, and I will bring you more of it next time. I'm going to record a bunch on Monday, which is the day after tomorrow. So there'll be some content coming up. And I will make it back to the uh, vanilla, quote-unquote, sort of vanilla map very soon to do some more stuff there. I have a few ideas of some projects I want to get into. And I also got a um, access for a, whatchamacallit, an alpha test for a new game coming up called Worlds Adrift, which looks pretty fun. So we might be checking that out, see what you all think about that. Until then, thank you for watching until the very end. Bye-bye.